that the United States, of the choices that the United States makes for the global system. Winston Churchill said something very wise when he said, the United States always does the right thing, but only after exhausting the alternatives. And it may well be that way going forward. So it is a challenging time, but it is also a time of great opportunity. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, you may address Professor Summers for questions, any questions. We have microphones uh, who will uh, help you in speaking out. Thank you, Professor Summer, for your lucid explanation of what's happening in the world. But going back, reverting to your first part of your lecture, the fantastic growth we've been having, uh, I think the 20th century at least benefited a lot from the evolution of transportation, sea, land and air, which could not have happened without oil. So I was wondering if we could extrapolate that the strategic importance of oil will continue in the 21st century, uh, actually maybe at a growing, accelerated gro importance. Maybe you could comment on that, especially as we're in Kuwait, an exporting country. Someone like me has to be a, a general economist who's an American speaking to a Kuwaiti audience is, I think, best advised to be humble on the subject of uh, oil. Uh, you in Kuwait have vastly more experience and more detailed knowledge of uh, oil markets uh, than I. I do not doubt that despite all of the emphasis and discussion around global climate change and fossil fuels, that the world will run on oil for a long time to come, and that oil will be the primary source of energy that will drive transportation for um, quite some time uh, to come. I think that's probably the right thing, but even if it isn't, given the political constraints associated with uh, achieving vast amounts of energy saving, I think it is the likely thing. That said, as I look at the future, relative to conventional expectations, I think I would highlight three points. One, technology always helps one find more. If there's one lesson of the last 200 years of economics, it's that Malthusians are almost always wrong. Whether it's Malthusians about food, whether it's the people who said that New York and London were going to be covered with three feet of horse manure, by 1925, because they didn't anticipate the invention of the automobile, whether it was the Club of Rome in 1974. As illustrated by the discovery of uh, tight oil and the, what will soon be the ubiquity of fracking technology in the United States, um, we tend to find it very difficult to forecast that which does not go along conventional and existing paths. And my guess is we will find more energy uh, and find more fossil fuels um, over time than we, now, uh, than we now expect. Second, I think we are likely uh, 
to achieve improvements in energy efficiency uh, in ways that are not fully contemplated. To date, um, the people who say that uh, information technology will reduce the need to travel and mean the death of distance have been basically wrong. To date, the greater effect has been that because people are able to keep in touch over longer distances, they feel more need to be together periodically. And probably the effect of information technology has been to magnify rather than reduce the demand for transportation. But it may not always be so. And as the capacity for virtual presence uh, increases, my suspicion would be that that will operate in the direction of somewhat reducing the demand uh, for transportation. Third, I think that the idea I suggested a few moments ago um, that I attributed to Professor Dornbush, that things take longer to happen than you think they will, and then they happen faster than, you, than I thought they could, than you, th than you thought they could, is probably an idea that's applicable here uh, as well. And I just don't know what form it will take, but I suspect with respect to renewable energy, some of that will come along. There will be a moment when, after some years of surprising on the low side, that surprises on the high side. And so there will be a major role for oil, certainly for the rest of my lifetime and probably well beyond. But I do think there are some factors operating to make the supply-demand balance move somewhat against uh, oil over the next several decades, move against high, high prices for oil over the next several decades. Professor Samer, my name is Philippe Karam. I'm uh, the IMF Middle East Center for Economics and Finance in Kuwait. Uh, my question is three pronged. I would like to hear your views about, uh, you mentioned something about the potential growth and uh, concrete opportunities. I would like to know whether, in your opinion, are there environmental and social constraints to growth? And should we be moving away from a paradigm? of policies to stabilize and increase growth to one explicitly recognizing limit and what are the implications of poverty reduction and job creation? That's my first question. The second question on the IT revolution you've mentioned, I'd like to also hear your views on what are the implications for inequality or in increasing vulnerability through, say, systemic uh, risk or network dependencies. And the last question is if you believe that crises are probable and predictable events and not black swans, what are the sources of the next crisis in your opinion? Do they lie in current fiscal, monetary and financial policies? Thank you. I'm feeling like I'm back taking my, uh, or, uh, back taking my oral exam. Um, <laughs> Your first question was about uh, limits, to, uh, limits to growth. I, I don't, I think clearly the right growth paradigm recognizes that when you use a machine, it depreciates, and that's something you have to subtract in measuring income, and that if you cut down a forest, you don't have the forest anymore, and that's something you have to recognize. That's something you should recognize in measuring income uh, as well. So I think economic thought has certainly been advanced uh, by the movement around sustainability. That said, um, there are so many people who are still so poor in the world, and even in the United States, which is at the cutting edge, 
as we measure things.